Lil Tay was reported dead at age 14 one day, and then alive the very next. She's been surrounded by a slew of shady people attempting to control her career as a social media star since she was only 9 years old. So today, I just have one question. Which one of them is behind this? Hi, I'm a random person on the internet. You're a random person on the internet, and together, we're here to talk about Lil Tay. Just last week, an unknown person pulled a really disturbing hoax, where they managed to temporarily convince the entire internet that the viral Instagrammer Lil Tay had died by somehow posting a death announcement straight to her Instagram account. Now, Tay already has a history of being used for content dating all the way back to 2018, but this recent news blows all her other controversies out of the water. Tay herself is just an innocent kid, but the people in her life are not very innocent at all. So today we're going to look at her rise to stardom as well as her mysterious disappearance at the height of her fame, and maybe we'll get some insight into what kind of person could have staged this internet meltdown in the first place. As of now, there is no confirmed answer for just who is behind this terrible hoax, but I definitely have my suspicions, and it's probably not the person you're thinking. The story is honestly a really weird one, involving everything from creative control to cryptocurrency. But before we get into all of that, I want to take a quick look at today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service that delivers fresh ingredients and great recipes straight to your door. You ever just want to make something nice, but you don't want the hassle of buying a bunch of groceries, making a bunch of measurements, and then dealing with a bunch of leftover ingredients all just for one home-cooked meal? Well, HelloFresh takes the complexity out of cooking by handling the meal planning for you and delivering ingredients that are pre-portioned ahead of time. My favorite thing about HelloFresh is that it makes it easy to try something new. Every week, there are 40 chef-crafted recipes to choose from, and with categories from family friendly to fit and wholesome, you get to choose what kind of meal works best for you. I have fun making the meals and they're delicious. If you're crunched for time, HelloFresh is still a perfect fit. They have quick and easy options that you can whip up in 15 minutes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code 50DANGELO at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. That's 50% off your order and free shipping when you go to HelloFresh.com and use code 50DANGELO. It's time to eat great food and make your life easier by trying Hello Fresh today. Now let's get into the video. I'm only nine years old. I ain't got no license, but I still drive this sports car. So I'm no stranger to Lil Tay discourse. In fact, I've actually made a video about her around two years ago. Now, if you've already seen that video, don't worry. I'm gonna give you the full picture start to finish. Parts of this may be familiar if you've already watched that video, but I actually have some new details I did not know before, and they play a really key part in this whole hoax that happened. So Lil Tay bursts onto the web in 2018 with her very brash Instagram account, setting the tone right off the bat. It's Lil Tay. Let me tell y'all something. This costs more to your rent. My toilet costs more to your rent. I think part of what makes this so funny is that that is one of the most normal bathrooms I've ever seen. But alas. I started working hard, moving bricks, and now we be living in the hill. See that view? Y'all don't have that view. If I'm being honest, I kind of prefer my view. <laughs> if you watch my previous videos, you probably noticed that I moved, and the view is definitely my favorite part. But that's neither here nor there. The place Lil Tay is showing off obviously does not really belong to her. Like, forget making money. She's not even old enough to have a concept of money yet. Like, look. This if a bed actually cost anywhere from 20000 to $2 million, all I'm saying is the bed better tuck me in at night, wake me up in the morning, do my job for me. Like, bed better have my money. But anyway, as silly as this all was, the videos just got more and more ridiculous. In one, she's bragging about driving a Benz. I'm only nine years old. I ain't got no license, but I still drive this sports car. In another, she's claiming to have shooters all over Hollywood. I got shooters there, there, here. I got shooters everywhere. No one gonna try cross. Like, if you've seen one Lil Tay video, you've seen them all. She's young, she has inexplicable access to money, she does the best rapper impersonation a nine-year-old girl from Canada can muster up. Like, it's all just pretty ridiculous. But, like all things from that time that we probably shouldn't have been giving attention in the first place, it was also ridiculously popular. The three videos I just showed you have over 10 million views each. And those viewers had a lot to say. PewDiePie made a big video reacting to her. I don't know if I should laugh or cry at this. It's just so ridiculous. Eminem name dropped her in a song, which thinking back doesn't even feel real. Little kitty go play. Feel like I'm babysitting Lil Tay. And that song is now sitting at a whopping 800 million plays between YouTube and Spotify. Lil Tay even wound up on national television in a disastrous Good Morning America interview. Like in this interview, she's attempting to defend her family from claims that they're the ones making her 
her create these videos. No one's forcing me to do this. That's not true that she wants to make money off of me. Because making the nine-year-old defend you is definitely normal behavior. Also, speaking of her family, we get a glimpse of her brother, who I believe was about 16 or so at the time. A lot of people are going to say this and that. We just, we just keep going. And we hear from her mom as well. She has a passion passion and a dream. And while they were doing their best to appear like supportive family members, it immediately became clear who was actually running the show here. A video leaked of her brother coaching Tay into creating these little Tay videos and getting really upset with her for not perfecting the delivery. Ten thou and I this- I said stop saying ten thou. Two thousand, three thousand, two thousand five hundred. <laughs> she sounds so dejected and for good reason. Her brother is raising his voice and getting angry at her for once again just not being old enough to have a concept of money. Like of course she she doesn't know whether a Louis bag is two or ten thousand dollars. She's not even ten herself. Lil Tay be popping on YouTube right now. You're gonna be like more ignorant. What do I say? Teaching a nine-year-old to be ignorant and really reinforcing those negative stereotypes about the culture you're making a mockery of for internet clout. Yeah, no wonder this is the same kid who coached her into throwing up gang signs and using racial slurs on camera. But as much as I hate to say it, all of this wasn't even the worst thing that was happening with Tay. In one video that I'm not going to show, he gave her a lighter and had her pretend to smoke a carrot. And in the leaked video that I'm really not going to show, he had this girl actually smoking. This goes way beyond a bad influence. This is an intense and willful endangerment of his little sister for content. So obviously her brother was doing awful things that very much deserve to be called out, but it is worth noting that he was a minor at the time. So it begs the question, what kind of mother would allow her daughter to be in the situation? Well, it turns out the same kind of mother that would actually put her daughter in the situation in the first place. Little Tay's mother was using her connections as a realtor to allow Tay and her brother access to exclusive locations, expensive properties, and even her boss's cars, apparently, which she wound up resigning over before they could fire her. So between recording embarrassing and inappropriate videos of this child for clout, encouraging her to use other people's property in places that she shouldn't have been in the first place, and even going so far as to record videos of her smoking, obviously things were not going well for Lil Tay. But another side effect of what her mom and brother were doing was that she got a bunch of vitriolic hate comments and intense backlash. And I'm not talking about normal run-of-the-mill comments either. People were calling this girl ugly, stupid, a bunch of derogatory terms. People really just became obsessed with calling her out. Like, it got to the point where Snoop Dogg, of all people, made a call-out post for Little Tay. Though honestly, he did make some pretty good points. And if the online backlash somehow wasn't bad enough, this was even spilling over into Tay's real life at this point. You Little Tay, right? You on the flex? Oh! Clearly, this was completely out of hand. But just when it seemed like things were about to go even further off the rails, Little Tay just disappeared. Nobody really knew what happened and it was a huge deal at the time. Like Danny Gonzalez made a whole video about it. Lil Tay, the internet's youngest flexor, is gone. At the time it felt like this big mystery, but it was later revealed that the Lil Tay videos finally stopped due to the intervention of Tay's father. Her father, Chris Hope, explained how everything went down via an interview. Lil Tay, whose real name is Claire Hope, was court ordered to live with her father in June 2018 after months of flexing videos and wild behavior. When my daughter's social media began to go viral this year, I disagreed with most of the social media activity. I took legal steps to stop things which I felt were dangerous to her physical and mental health and to her future, Chris explained. Now, you may notice the dad calling her Claire here, but according to Wikipedia, it's sort of unclear which one is her legal name, so I've just been calling her Tay for consistency's sake. Now, as far as what he said about getting the law to step in and finally stop the exploitation of his nine-year-old daughter on social media, it looks like he was pretty much successful. In fact, I don't really think there's been a new photo or video of little Tay in the entire five years since he stepped in and took action. Like there's this one person who went viral because people thought that they were little Tay years later, but no, that's not her. And no, little Tay is not hanging around on a secret TikTok account somewhere. I hope my daughter is able to follow a path that will make her happy, keep her safe, and allow her to grow up into the amazing person I know she is, Chris concluded. You know, it probably is heartbreaking to watch your very own family members attempt to turn your daughter into something she's not, just for a quick buck. And honestly, it's really nice to imagine Imagine that Tay's just gotten to be a normal kid since then, like every child should be, and not some sort of social media star who's getting stopped by random grown men on the street asking her to flex for them. Now, even though her online presence suddenly halted, there are still remnants of her previously planned work floating around. One of these remnants is this all but forgotten and completely unasked for reality TV slash documentary 
thing that only ever had three episodes. This little Tay, the youngest flexor of the century. I'm only nine years old. The show itself was obviously unnecessary, but more than that, it honestly just felt kind of creepy. Like, look at how Tay's mom and brother are just lurking in the background of these shots watching her. We can take that energy that you put on the gram and put it into an art form. Seeing as they're the ones creating her persona and coaching her every move, it honestly felt less like adult supervision and more like some sort of weird control. The show does at least seem to show a glimpse of Claire's actual interests, though. Well, I want to make music. And believe it or not, there actually is unreleased Lil Tay music floating around on the internet. But unfortunately, it's immediately obvious that her brother was responsible for writing this and that Tay herself didn't have much to do with it. I'm only nine, I'm smoking on tree. Dad. Smoking on pee. Ooh. Money way, that is the key. Yeah. Smoking on pee. Yeah, I'll give you three guesses for what pee refers to here. Play-Doh, pretzels. How about methamphetamine? We've got a nine-year-old rapping about smoking meth. Between that and the actual smoking, it's no wonder her father was able to get custody. Like, Tay is obviously just not safe around her mother and brother. But you know what? As much as I hate to say it, the song's chorus is low-key catchy, though. Lil Tay, money way. Yeah. Lil Tay, money way. Lil Tay, money way. But you didn't hear that from me. Now, while the forgotten documentary and the unreleased song sort of seem to imply that Tay had planned on just going full steam ahead, it turns out there were actually quite a bit of creative differences going on behind the scenes. This insider article from the time describes there basically being like two factions of Lil Tay's management. In one corner is her manager, Harry Singh, her father, Christopher Hope, and her promoter, Chris Jones, who works with Lil Tay on her music career. The three want to streamline the operation around her brand and focus on music, etc. In the other corner are Lil Tay's mother and brother, Angela and Jason Tian, who have been instrumental in cultivating the Lil Tay persona. So on the one hand, her father and manager seem to be behind the scenes promoting her interests. But on the other hand, we just have her mother and brother trying to make some quick Instagram bucks off of her. The article went on to include a quote from her manager at the time, Harry Sang. According to Sang, Jason Tian, a teenager, currently controls her account. Jason is saying he's the one who created Lil Tay. If he's the one who created Lil Tay, Lil Tay belongs with him. That's that's how he thinks. Now, this manager guy, Harry Sang, seems like a pretty decent dude who, like Tay's father, just wanted her to follow her true interests. He even appeared in a few of her videos before. But it actually looks like Tay's father and Harry chose not to move forward with her music career because nobody's really heard from her since 2018. Lil Tay, the meme persona, was left far behind, and Lil Tay herself seems like she's now far away from the clutches of her brother and mother, hopefully happily ever after with her dad. Happily ever after, that is, until 2021, when her brother attempted to stage a comeback. So her brother, who is now a legal adult at this point, begins making posts on her Instagram account claiming that Tay's father is actually abusive, and that he he's stealing her money. Using an out of context clip of her crying, he basically claims that Tay never wanted to go with her dad and that her father stole all of her money so she has no legal fees. So if you're asking yourself, wait, did he really just come back after three years to ask for money? Of course he did. He had a $150,000 GoFundMe that he was promoting along with these posts. He tried to start a hashtag in everything, making this out to be some sort of battle between Tay and her dad. But it's pretty obvious that this custody battle was actually just between Tay's parents parents, and Tay herself was being used as a prop, basically. He also made a ton of claims that Tay was being physically and mentally abused by her father and his new wife, and he posted proof pictures that didn't really prove anything, like a business card with some sort of untraceable police report number on the back, or a photo of Tay having an allergic reaction that he was trying to pass off as bruises. Like, the pictures he was posting were not related to the claims he was making. He pretty quickly realized that, like, nobody was going to donate to this thing because of how shady everything seemed, so he attempted to provide even more proof, this time of how Tay's father was using her money to live this lavish lifestyle with his wife. But his proof photos are just a bunch of pictures of them on vacation or posing with nice bags. And to be clear, Tay's father is a lawyer, so like you can definitely go on nice vacations and buy designer handbags with lawyer money. The main thing for me about this idea that her father used her for money is that all of the videos of Lil Tay that were available online were created by her brother and mother. You can see them in the background of all of them. And the moment her dad showed up, 
All of these videos stopped because according to him, he took legal steps to ensure that nobody could actually force her to create content anymore. I'm pretty sure if you're trying to make money off of a child on social media, getting the law to prevent the child from making social media posts is probably not your first step. He'd have way more to gain just making Tay do the little Tay persona until the end of time, like some sort of even worse Ryan's toy review. But instead, he took actions to ensure that nobody could really use her for profit like that again. The brother, on the other hand, was very much using Tay for profit and is even doing so now, trying to get $150,000 from this GoFundMe. Now, the goal was later lowered to $19,000, I guess to sort of soften the blow that they didn't even make a fraction of what they were trying to ask for. But even at $19,000, they still didn't reach their new goal, again, just because of how unreliable everything seemed. And as important as this GoFundMe supposedly was, he only ever made one update to it before abandoning it forever. Eventually, the allegations were deleted from Instagram altogether, but the GoFundMe is still up if you want to view all of the brothers' claims in detail. And I do want to make one thing really clear about like the physical and mental abuse claims. If what he's alleging is true, that would be very disturbing. And like I said in my previous video, if Tay herself was coming forward and saying that these things were happening, I would believe her in a heartbeat. However, the only source for this is her incredibly shady brother, who is even at this point still trying to get some money out of this. Now, ostensibly, this money was to help Tay herself, but we really have no way of knowing, and we definitely have no way of trusting him. So I'm not here to say that Tay was or was not being mistreated by her father, because while I hope that's not the case, I frankly have no way of knowing. And ultimately, that's up to authorities to decide anyway, not up to me. But I am here to say that there is actual evidence of her brother and mother abusing Tay, what with the videos of them allowing her to smoke. So it's sort of strange that everything they were accusing the father of, we know that they were actually doing themselves. Anyway, regardless of whether or not this was some sort of last minute cash grab or an actual genuine plea for help, this was going to be the last we heard from the Lil Tay Instagram account for years. Years until last week when that awful Instagram post was made. Rest in peace to Lil Tay, y'all. With the 2021 GoFundMe post deleted, the last post available on her account was from all the way back in 2018. So needless to say, people were definitely caught off guard when out of the blue, the account posted a statement that quickly racked up over 800,000 likes. It was a very brief statement, but it contained the worst news imaginable. Here, we'll go over it really fast. It is with a heavy heart that we share the devastating news of our beloved Claire's sudden and tragic passing. We have no words to express the unbearable loss and indescribable pain. This outcome was entirely entirely unexpected and has left all of us in shock. Now, the post didn't give a cause of death, which is understandable. They don't owe us one, and these announcements often don't include them. But as bad and heavy as this all started off, it actually proceeded to get even worse. Her brother's passing adds an even more unimaginable depth to our grief. During this time of immense sorrow, we kindly ask for privacy as we grieve this overwhelming loss, as the circumstances surrounding Claire and her brother's passing are still under investigation. So not just Tay, but her brother as well. The post doesn't state if this happened at the same time, but either way, this would be awful, awful news. It would be a tragedy no matter how it went down, but the fact that a police investigation was involved really just makes it sound like something especially terrible happened. Claire will forever remain in our hearts, her absence leaving an irreplaceable void that will be felt by all who knew and loved her. And that was the story, and people took it and ran with it. Mashable. Lil Tay, the 14-year-old controversial internet star, has reportedly died. BuzzFeed News. A statement shared by internet personality Lil Tay's family revealed that she and her older brother have died at ages 14 and 21. Insider via Yahoo. Lil Tay, the brass child internet star, has reportedly died at the age of 15. I'm not even really sure what age she was at this point, since some articles are saying 15, some are saying 14. Famous birthdays said 16, but honestly, it doesn't even matter at all, because either way, she was just a kid, and this was terrible news. And when I say people ran with the story, I'm not just talking about internet publications like BuzzFeed and Mashable. This was getting picked up everywhere. I feel like you could hardly use the internet that day without somehow finding out about it, which is how I found out about it. Variety. Lil Tay dead. Internet rapper's death is under investigation. People. Rapper and influencer Lil Tay dead at 14 in sudden and tragic passing. Besides these huge entertainment magazines like People and Variety posting this, you also had all of the smaller ones doing their best to catch up with the new cycle as well. Hollywood Life. Who is Lil Tay? All about the Instagram star dead at 14. Page 6. Who is Lil Tay? The 14-year-old social media 
media star who died along with her brother. Like I said, this was literally everywhere, but without a doubt, the peak of this media attention was when ABC News themselves reported the story. ABC News is mainstream media, and they had pretty much one of the most straightforward headlines out of all of them. ABC News, Lil Tay, rapper and social media star, dies at 14. Now, because this news was absolutely all over the place, but the post and the articles were so short on details, people really wanted to know what happened. They wanted to know so much that some of them started making up their own details. And the result was absolute chaos. I saw people speculating that it was everything from a car crash to a suicide to some sort of murder conspiracy. It was all baseless and pretty counterproductive because it made it really hard to find the actual truth. And the actual truth was that nobody actually knew what was going on. To make matters even worse, people were making fake accounts claiming to be Tay's brother or even Tay herself, claiming that the two were still alive, which is honestly such a low thing to do. Like Will fully misleading a bunch of people just for some quick Instagram likes, but it was effective because now some people were doubting the veracity of the original post. But at the same time, as opposed to claiming that Tay was secretly alive, we also had people who knew her in real life at one point posting statements that made it seem like the opposite was true. Does anyone remember Ro Vicky? I mean, I don't blame you if you don't because I try very hard not to remember her. And this whole time I knew it. I knew I was a black girl. She's not in fact a black girl and pretending to be one is the only reason she was popular. So actually in retrospect, respect, it makes perfect sense that she was friends with Tay at the height of her popularity. But because of this association, it seemed like an extra confirmation of the news when she posted this TikTok. Rest in peace to Lil Tay, y'all. Uh, and her brother. But strangely, despite Wo Vicky's apparent confirmation, it seemed like everybody with actual authority on the situation was outright refusing to confirm anything at all. First, police in Los Angeles and Vancouver, the two places Tay had lived, both denied that they were investigating any deaths involving her or her brother. This seemed to be the first fact in direct opposition to what was reported in this Instagram post, but it is possible that this incident didn't take place in either of these places. However, that wasn't the last bit of non-confirmation that we got. Remember Harry? Harry Singh, Lil Tay's manager, he came forward to say that he, quote, cannot definitively confirm whether or not she's alive. To me, it sounds like he didn't really know at that time, but I would assume that if she had passed, he probably would know about it. It honestly raised more questions than answers, but things were only going to get even more confusing. When asked about the post, Tay's father himself came out with a very similar statement, outright refusing to confirm or deny anything about it. At this point, I don't know what to think. I mean, obviously her father is a lawyer, so refusing to confirm or deny things is kind of par for the course, but with all of these statements and non-statements and brief information and complete misinformation, why couldn't anyone just give a yes or no answer to what was pretty much the biggest Biggest question of the day. Was she alive or not? Little Tay is not there. Let's talk about TMZ for a second. As a media outlet, they are absolutely infuriating. It's not just the unethical journalism practices, it's not even the fact that they harass and embarrass many of the people they talk about. No, the most annoying thing about TMZ is that despite all of this, they're usually right. So the day after this disheartening Instagram post, TMZ, as usual, was the first to report the shocking development that Lil Tay was very much alive. The article includes a statement from Tay provided by her family to TMZ, and it explains that she's alive, but unfortunately very shaken up by this whole situation. I want to make it clear that my brother and I are safe and alive, but I'm completely heartbroken and struggling to even find the right words to say. It's been a very traumatizing 24 hours. All day yesterday, I was bombarded with endless heartbreaking, and tearful phone calls from loved ones, all while trying to sort out this mess. That honestly does sound like a ton of emotional distress for anyone, let alone a child. But without a doubt, it was good news to hear that both she and her brother are alive. But seeing as how she and her brother are alive, the new biggest question is who made the Instagram post and why? And for now, it seems like we don't really know. My Instagram account was compromised by a third party and used to spread jarring misinformation and rumors regarding me to the point that even my name was wrong. My legal name is Tay Tian, not Claire Hope. Honestly, I can't even tell from that statement whether Tay knows who hacked her or not. Now with so many false or inaccurate stories from the day before, one has to question, how do we even know if this new update is true? But thankfully, this story had what none of the previous posts had, and that is corroboration from an outside source. A pretty big outside source, actually. Meta themselves, the owner of Instagram, confirmed that Lil Tay's account was compromised and they helped her get it back. And sure enough, the post was removed once access was restored to the rightful account owner. Also, even more indication that this was someone maliciously targeting Tay's family was released by TMZ. They're the ones who asked Meta for confirmation about the hack, and in that article, there's a 
really interesting tidbit. It appears the alleged hackers didn't stop at a social media announcement. Before the ominous post Wednesday, TMZ was contacted by someone claiming to be a rep for Lil Tay's family with a full press release and said she and her brother had died at their mother's home in Vancouver. But when TMZ contacted police in the Vancouver area as well as the family members, everyone was totally in the dark. So this was definitely a coordinated effort and unfortunately, it pretty much worked. But at the end of the day, nobody actually died, so that makes me feel a heck of a lot better about the situation. Now, as you can imagine, at this point, there were a whole lot of news outlets that were looking pretty silly. So they scrambled to save face after reporting this incorrect story and they were moving fast. I literally saw some of the articles being updated in real time as I was trying to screenshot them for this video. Like it would say one thing on Google and then I would click in and the headline would be completely different. And you know, I don't really think there's anything wrong with the fact that they reported on the story in the first place because it was newsworthy and the announcement was made. That part did happen. But I just think some of them reported it better than others. Like all the outlets that said she reportedly died, that's fine because well, it was reported that she had died. But the outlets like ABC just making definitive statements like Lil Tay is dead. It just seems like there was probably a better way of doing that that would have aged better had conflicting information come out later. So I actually wanted to take a quick look at how some of these articles made their corrections because I find it pretty interesting. Variety changed their headline to indicate that Tay is in fact alive and they blamed the error on the fact that Tay's managers apparently confirmed the news to Variety. But like, which managers though? The only ones I saw were Harry Singh, actually, just running all over the place saying he couldn't confirm it. I actually wonder if Variety got duped by the same people who initially tried to contact TMZ with the news. The same people who allegedly made the post. But either way, Variety at least published a correction and they did so quickly and clearly. ABC was a little sneakier. Instead of admitting that they had gotten the story wrong or that the story changed after the fact, they just sneakily replaced the entire webpage with a new article. So this looks like it's just another new article about how Tay's actually alive, but if you look at the URL, you'll notice it's the same one that previously displayed the one I showed earlier. Lil Tay, rapper and social media star, dies at 14. I think I like this approach a lot less than variety. If you get something wrong on that scale, I would prefer a correction versus changing things to make it seem like you never got anything wrong in the first place. But at the very least, at least the inaccurate information was removed, and I guess that's what really matters in the end. Which is why it's absolutely baffling that People Magazine couldn't even bother to do that. As of the making of this video, the original article is still just right there on their website. Like you guys have a page on your site implying that this girl is dead and she's not. They at least bothered to publish a new article with accurate information, but I'm not really sure how useful that is when even now the page claiming that she's dead is still being recommended on their website. So yeah, those were just a few of the good, the bad, and the ugly corrections that stood out to me personally, but let's just say that this was a busy day for a lot of journalists. I don't think I've ever seen a media retraction on this scale since since never, I guess. So if you believed the inaccurate story before the truth came out, I really can't blame you. Between all of this media coverage and the post itself, it did seem like at the very least, this was very possibly true, if not even likely. But looking back, I actually think there was one sort of giveaway in the post itself, right when it was posted, that sort of made me question who exactly was writing this post. This entire video, I've been referring to Tay's brother as, well, Tay's brother, because that's really his only relevance to me. But if he was part of my family or someone very close to me, wouldn't I just refer to him by Jason, his actual name? Like, why does the announcement refer to it as her brother's passing? That's like bizarrely vague language to use in what is supposed to be a tribute to your deceased child. Even calling him her brother, Jason, would make a lot more sense than what's going on here. But at the time, I sort of figured it could be chalked up to just a really weird choice of words. Like thinking back, I didn't really believe or disbelieve the Instagram post when it initially came out. All I knew for sure is that the people behind the account were definitely not to be trusted based on all of those past actions. So I figured I would just need some more confirmation from outside sources. But when those sources started popping up, completely refusing to confirm the news, I felt like the truth started becoming pretty clear. And then the very next day, Tay herself gave us an update. So there you have it. Now, the story may seem like it's over, right? But there's actually someone that you forgot about. There is like a literal villain in this scenario who emerged from behind the shadows after this hack was made. And they're actually someone we encountered earlier in this video. I haven't seen so many people talking about this, 
But I think the real bad guy in the story is actually Lil Tay's former manager, Harry Sang. Now you might be thinking like, whoa, 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 where did this come from? What's going on? And hold on, I'll explain it all. I'm not accusing Harry Sang of actually hacking Lil Tay's Instagram account. I have no way of knowing if he did that. And that's not something I really believe happened as of now. But I am saying that Harry Sang has turned out to be one of the sleaziest people I've ever brought up on this channel. Here are some of the details that slipped through the cracks. Shortly after the death hoax was posted, someone launched a Lil Tay cryptocurrency. You can see that it was deployed less than 24 hours afterwards and that it's since been marked as a scam. This was mildly interesting and as always I wanted to cover all of my bases while researching for this video so I read a quick article about the launch. And you'll never guess whose name popped up. Curiously however, the BNB chain token launch came amid the development of an upcoming Ethereum based Lil Tay token created by her apparent ex-manager Harry Sang. He denies that his Lil Tay token has any connection to the BNB chain version launch earlier this week. So basically, Harry Sang, according to this article, did not launch the scammy, suspiciously timed Lil Tay cryptocurrency. He just so happens to be working on his own Lil Tay themed cryptocurrency that he's now all too happy to talk about since they're interviewing him. But wait, it gets worse. We decided to use Lil Tay as it was a legendary meme. Lil Tay token CEO Sang told Decrypt, and also because of my former role. A representative for Lil Tay told Decrypt that the young influencer has nothing to do with Sang's project. Tay is not at all associated with this cryptocurrency, nor did she approve of it or know anything about it, the representative said. So this man is trying to use his previous position as Tay's manager to create a cryptocurrency with her image, all without offering her a dime or even bothering to even ask for permission. The man has found yet another way to profit off of her, and she's not even online anymore. Clearly, he is not the kind of guy I thought he was initially. Sang told Decrypt that the Ethereum token project hadn't finalized a launch date yet due to arranging for crypto influencer partners and features tied to the token launch, including a merchandise shop. But the rapper's alleged death situation changed the narrative. I could have launched this right now, Sang said, but I absolutely had no intention to make it a pump and dump. Well, thank you, Harry, for choosing not to launch Lil Tay cryptocurrency merch just hours after you thought she was dead. Very upstanding of you. Now, as for the crypto site itself, it looks like he's temporarily taken it offline for maintenance. But as always, there are screenshots of it floating around online. Lil Tay out here balling. Are you living in the degen world and being broke as hell? This is what you, a grown man, have been up to in the time since you've been Lil Tay's manager. He's also apparently been attempting to use his limited clout to make some sort of media statement to imply that the death hoax was a stunt created by Tay's brother. Here are the two reasons for why he believes that this whole thing was just a publicity stunt that her brother orchestrated. Firstly, he claims that it doesn't take Meta 24 hours to restore a hacked account. And secondly, he claims that Tay's brother is the exact kind of person who would fake his and his sister's death for internet clout. Now, obviously his first claim aged poorly because Meta themselves came forward and confirmed their involvement and honestly it really does take some time to get an account back i know that from previous experience but as for his second claim about her brother being the kind of person to do that i mean he's not really wrong like at first when the post was made i felt really bad for suspecting for a moment that her brother might be behind it but then I remembered all of the things that her brother actually was behind, and all of a sudden, this Instagram post seems like it might have just been another Tuesday for him. But much like Harry, I really don't know if her brother did this, and I'm not here to say that I believe he did. But no matter how I look at it, it doesn't really seem like her brother gained anything from this, at least not as of now. While Harry, on the other hand, has gotten quite a bit. This death hoax has provided him with free promo for his crypto, and now he's also turned it into some sort of TikTok series where he's positioning himself as some sort of whistleblower. Little Tay is not dead, and her Instagram was not hacked. Hi, I'm Harry Sang, the last known manager of Little Tay. Let me tell you what happened. Notice how he calls himself Tay's last known manager, because at this point, even he doesn't know what's going on in Tay's personal life anymore. In the article where he doubted the hack, he admitted that he hadn't been in contact with the family for over two years. But despite this, he's now posing as some sort of insider authority figure in a situation that he's not even a part of. I believe Jason, the brother of Little Tay, has someone to talk over Little Tay's account. That whoever took over released a statement of Tay's passing. Notice how he's had to change the story because Meta came out with information that directly contradicts his initial claims. So the new story is that the brother worked together with someone else to sort of make it look like the account was hacked. That way, when asked, Meta would confirm that they helped get the account back. While not entirely impossible, 
This is honestly starting to feel a bit far-fetched. But honestly, this is the part of the TikTok that I thought was just completely unacceptable. I now have proof that indicate her whole family were possibly complicit into this as well. What I mean is the mom, the brother, and everyone that involved with them are all complicit. Maybe Tay herself, but who knows? Look, I understand being suspicious of Tay's brother and mother. I, I really do, based off of their past actions. But maybe Tay herself? Really? We're going to contribute to this now years old narrative that Lil Tay is just this awful person, despite her being a child and being the victim of all of these situations. Like, no matter who did that, that would be scummy. But this coming from somebody who actually knew this girl in real life at one point, what kind of person does that? Even if he is somehow right about all of these far-fetched accusations about her family, which he could be. He's still the one using Tay's image to shill his cryptocurrency without her permission. And he's also using his status as her last known manager to basically imply that she caused this death hoax herself. Also, he can get some quick TikTok clout. Stay tuned for part two. Yeah, no wonder Tay's father went from working with this man to not speaking to him for over two years. Now, he hasn't posted part two with his alleged proof yet, but I'm really not sure just how reliable this proof is going to be when this is the same man who has cited sidekicks as a source. Like before Tay's family came out saying that she is in fact alive, he posted this absolutely bizarre video. My name is Harry Sang. I was the last known manager of Little Tay. We get it. I also engaged my personal sidekick who share insight from her guardian angels, suggesting that the initial news may not be entirely accurate. I mean, I guess the guardian angels technically didn't lie, but something tells me your information isn't that reliable either with the way you totally flubbed the meta thing. It really seems, to me at least, like this man, just like the rest of us, has absolutely no idea what's really going on. But he's doing his best to reach and sort of pin the blame on someone, anybody, Tay's brother in this case, or even Tay herself. And so I started thinking harder about why he would be so desperate to prove that someone has done this. And that's when I realized, out of everybody involved in the story so far, I feel like he's actually the one who's only gained things. With all the attention that you could say Lil Tay's account is getting, it's very negative attention, and nobody's happy about this. But Harry Singh, on the other hand, is getting all this free promo for his cryptocurrency. He's now getting to leverage this TikTok series out of it, which has more views than all of his other TikToks. Like, it's just really convenient that three months after he announces this cryptocurrency, this hack occurs, and then somebody releases a fake version of it, allowing him to do this interview and promote his own coin. So while I'm not accusing Harry Singh of actually staging this hoax, I am absolutely accusing him of totally using this to his benefit. Even if he had nothing to do with the post itself, it's very off-putting how quickly he's managed to wrangle the situation into his favor. And despite being the money-hungry opportunist who is still using Tay for attention and profit to this day, he actually has the nerve to call other people out. Someone in his Instagram comments said, I knew that was fake as soon as I read about it. This was just how they planned to introduce her back into the Instagram world. To which Harry responds with, which would be unethical. Says the man creating a cryptocurrency based off a child he hasn't even spoken to or seen for the last two years. Pot, meat, kettle. Actually, forget pots and kettles. This is like a black hole calling the ocean floor black. So the question remains, who actually hacked Lil Tay's Instagram account? I've already thrown some ideas out there, but I'm actually really curious who you think could have done this. So let me know in the comments who are you thinking, and more importantly, why you think they could have done this. Crypto bros, her actual bro, a completely unrelated third party. Don't worry about a right or wrong answer, because like at this point, I don't even have the right or wrong answers. As I said at the very beginning of the video, this is all just speculation. I mean, right as I was finishing this video up, Lil Tay's mom actually just posted a strange Instagram post, which seems to suggest that Tay now lives with her and is apparently planning an internet comeback. So at this point, I'm not ruling anybody out. Regardless, whoever it was should be absolutely absolutely ashamed of themselves for attempting to use this girl for attention one last time. But for now, it seems like we'll never really know. But there are a few last things that I do know. One thing I really want to reiterate is that we should be glad that Tay and her brother are alive. The death hoax shouldn't have happened, full stop. But it did, and honestly, them being alive is the best outcome that could have come from all of this. Her brother is an opportunistic troll who used his sister for money, endangered her, and caused a bunch of damage in the process multiple times. However, I'm still not going to wish death upon him or his family, regardless of that. Like, if this news was actually true, I, I don't even think I would make a video about it. I wouldn't have much to say other than just... 
I'm upset. So while this isn't the worst possible outcome, it's definitely not any sort of happy ending either. Tay is still getting insane amounts of hate online, even to this day, like truly disgusting stuff. Even as I was editing this video, I saw people saying things like, oh, I'm glad she died. Or later they were like, I wish the news was actually true. Things that would just be completely unhinged to say to anybody, let alone someone who is still very much a child. First, people are hating on her because of the videos that her mom and brother were making her create. Now people are hating on her because of whoever staged this hack. And honestly, it's like they've just decided to collectively ruin this girl's life as far as her ability to exist online in a normal way. So because of that, I'm actually kind of glad she hasn't been posting all these years. Hopefully she continues to just stay offline and focus on the things she actually wants to do in life. And you know, unless she really is the one who wants to come back like her mom is claiming, I think the best possible ending would be if we never really heard about Lil Tay ever again. Because then at least people might finally leave this girl alone. Anyway, thank you for your support. Thank you for watching if you happen to make it this far. And as always, I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.